Well, good morning and welcome back to Destiny Speaks. Well, today is Wednesday, you guys. We are at the midpoint of our work week. I hope that today finds you well, that you guys have woke up this morning with a positive attitude, that you've already given your Lord and Savior praise and worship, worship for who he is. It was the Lord Jesus that woke you up this morning. It was not that alarm clock. I know that it went off, but it's his breath in your body. It's the Spirit of God that's within you that caused you to wake up and face another day. So we are just grateful for that and we want to tell God thank you. And as I said on yesterday, you just never know what you're going to face when you close your door behind you in the morning. So you always want to be prepared. You want to ask God to cover you and cover your family and then order your steps throughout the day. The Bible says that the steps of a good man, meaning male or female, are ordered by the Lord. So let's just just ask God to order our steps today, okay? So this morning, I just wanted to talk with you briefly about uh, being prepared for the Word of God. Are you prepared? Have you prepared your heart for the Word that's going to be sown into your life? You know, in the book of Mark, I believe it's the fourth book of Mark, um, starting at the third chapter, the Lord is speaking to his disciples, and he's talking about um, the, the sower. And he says that the sower sows the Word, okay? And so when the Word of God comes, to your life, um, Jesus is saying that that word, if your heart is not prepared for the word, uh, the word is just going to, you're going to go to church, you're going to get the word, you're going to, um, you know, read the word in your Bible, but it's not going to last with you. You're going to hear it. And before you can, it can even take root. The enemy is going to come and rip that away from you because your heart is not prepared. You know, you, you, you've you heard the word, but you're just not ready to receive that word. So you're not going to see anything manifest in your life. And then he said, there'll be people who um, will hear the word and they'll be excited about the word, you know, but it's going to fall on stony ground, on a stony heart. So even though you've received that word, you know, by the time you get home, maybe even before you get home, you know, something's going to happen, you know, maybe, um, you didn't get a check, the check in the mail that you were expecting, or you found out some bad news. So now that word has left you because now you're you're focused on uh, the bad news that you got, or you're saying, "Well, this isn't working for me." So the word never even takes root. And then he says that some of the word that is sown is going to fall on ground that has roots and tares in there, okay? And it's going to, you're going to go with that word and you're going to be going along. You're going to be meditating on that word and believe in God. But at the same time, there are disappointments and there are frustrations that's growing up along with that word. And you're going to start getting into worry. And now you're, instead of focusing on the word that you receive and what you know to be true about the word of God, now now you're focused on, you know, your problems and you're, you're putting your attention on those. So that word again is not taking root. Okay. And, and the thorns and the thistles that are growing up with that, the word, that bad news, that trouble, those bills, that's going to choke that word. So again, that word has not taken root. Okay, but if you have prepared your heart, you know, if you have been spending time in the word, if you have been meditating on that word, if you have been believing God, then you are getting your heart right to receive that word. So when the word comes, you will receive that word into your heart. You will believe that word and that word will begin to produce fruit in your life. Okay, and that's what it's all about. We hear the word of God. We read the word of God. We meditate on the word of God. And we want to see that word begin to produce fruit in our lives. You see, Satan is very cunning. He doesn't want the word that you hear to take root. You know, he knows that the best time to, to stop the growth of a tree is in its genesis, is in its very beginning. So as soon as you hear, hear the word of God, he's going to come to you quickly. And he may not, you know, you may be a one that he gets in the beginning stages before the word even has time to, to fall and nestle in your heart. He may get it right away. Or you may be that one where it falls on stony ground and, you know, you walk out of there hearing the word and you put your Bible down and you've read the word and 
But then something happens and you immediately start focusing on that and you forgot all about the word of God. Or you might be the one who, well, you're happy for a little while and you're meditating and you're going along and you're believing God for what his word said. But then you get caught up in the cares of the world, you know, and the frustrations of the world. And now you're, um, you know, your heart is hardening um, to the word that you've heard from God because you don't see anything manifest right away. Okay, so I don't know where you fall in where your seed is sown. But I know that if you don't prepare your heart to receive the word, then it's never going to take root. And something that has no, that you can't, nothing can live without a root. If you don't have a root, you know, if you're a plant and you don't have a root, then you're not going to grow. And you certainly are not going to produce any fruit. So we just want to make sure that we have prepared our hearts to receive the word of God so that it can take root in our lives and so that we can produce fruit. Okay. You know, at the beginning of this parable, Jesus starts out by saying, hearken and behold, hearken means to listen. And behold means to look. He's saying, look and listen. And at the end of the parable, which is around verse 9, he's saying, he who has an ear, let him hear. Now listen, we all have ears. So you, you have to understand that he's not talking about these physical ears that are attached to the side of your head. He's saying that he who has an ear, a spiritual ear, and some things you just have to catch in your spirit. You have to understand, as we talked about before, that there's more to this world to, than what we just see. That you have a spiritual world all around you. And that is where you have to take hold of this world, this word. Because if you are just looking at things with the natural eye, if you're just going by what you see, then that word will never take root. Because a lot of times, life only shows us you know, a negative side. All we see is our bills. All we see is the doctor's report, you know, what people are saying about us. But we have to see with our spiritual eyes and we have to hear with our spiritual ears. So that's what he's talking about when he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. So hearken today. Behold today, look and listen with your spiritual eyes and with your spiritual ears. Hear the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Listen, the word of God is true. God is not a man that he should lie. So when the word of God comes to you uh, through your bishop, through your pastor, through your reading and meditating on the word, that is word that you can take hold of. And you can use that word to begin to produce fruit in your life. No matter what it looks like no matter what's going on around you stay focused on the word stand on the word the bible says that heaven and earth will pass away one day heaven and earth is going to pass away but guess what the word of god will remain so you can take that to the bank all right anyway i love you guys just wanted to leave you um with that word this morning we're going to meditate on the word we're not going to allow the enemy to come and steal that away from us we believe god okay i love you guys this has been destiny speaks have an awesome day